Live now with me on SecondCityRadio.net. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Steve Brookstein. Steve, hello. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm all right, you know. I'm all right. Christmas is coming up. Good. You know, Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and you, sir. And you. Uh, listen, thank you so much indeed for coming on the show. I know that I know Steve likes to uh, throw his uh, his hand behind uh, people that are trying to trying to do well in the right circumstances. Uh, Steve, uh, the first question that's come up uh, on email this afternoon. Uh, how long have you actually been performing for singing? Was it way before the X Factor? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, X Factor was too. But I won X Factor. Um, <laughs> I like saying that. Uh, <laughs> when I when I won X Factor in two thousand four. I'd probably be, that was, uh, I was 36, and I'd started singing when I was about 20, in, in, in terms of, like, taking lessons and taking it seriously. I mean, I'd, I've always sung, but never in a kind of a professional manner. But, uh, yeah, so I've, I've always been doing it, and uh, I think it's really important to actually, before you go out there, is to get some level of uh, experience uh, you know, through having singer lessons and and or, you know, or if you've got a uh, some people say oh I've never had any singer lessons and, and that, that's great I mean I used to work with a girl that had an amazing voice um, and she never had any singer lessons but uh, you know she 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 sang so much she put the hours in that way so she was always practicing and, and you don't have to have singer lessons but for me it helps you know Helped me get to a position where you know I felt confident to go out and perform. You know, so yeah, I've been doing it for, for many years now. So you know, you know, people in different industries, they've got something. They've got the heart set on something. You must have had your heart set on when you started your, your singing career before the X Factor came along. You must have thought, yeah. what kind of artist you'd want to be. So then, what was your decision? Because in whichever way we skirt round it, we can't. Uh, what yeah. was the idea about auditioning on the X Factor? Did you like, at that particular time? Did you like this idea of this new concept coming through? Is that what swung you, or did you think you need that little bit of Jack to help you get into your career? No, not at all. I mean, I, I mean, I was at an age where I was, I'd given up on being an artist. I mean, I, I kind of, uh, I went into songwriting. My, when I, when I got to that, I, I always said to myself, if I was, if I wasn't going to get a record deal by the age of thirty, yeah. I'll, I'll give up, you know, and I'm not, I don't mean give up music, I mean, in terms, because you, you change your goals, you know, you, you, everyone has aspirations where you want to go in life, and, and and I just took up singing, I loved singing, I was I was gigging in bars, I, I just loved my job, it's, it's a dream job, you know, if you, if you, if you do anything and, and just enjoy yourself, that you, you're doing well, so I, I, I just thought, if, if I'm not going to make it as a singer, uh, you know, doing the music I want to do. Because <clears throat> at the time, there's people like Ken Thomas out there, there was Mick Astley, and there's all these kind of white guys doing soul music. You had Curtis Steiger, you had, you know, there's, there's some fantastic people um, doing soul music. Um, so I kind of thought, you know, there was, at the time, there wasn't a market for another guy coming through. Um, I had a, a little bit of limited success doing some moving soul. Um, I did a dance track. Um, with MCA Records that did well, um, and and I, I kind of thought to myself, it, it, I won't go, I won't really kind of get in that kind of break as an as an artist. So I, I went into songwriting and producing and working with other artists, and and things kind of went well for me on that side of um, of the business. Um, and so it, it going on X Factor, it, it was just a case of I've been I've been doing some clubs, I've been doing. Um, bars and I was, I was getting out singing again I was, I was enjoying my singing and I just kind of wanted to kind of show what I, I did I never had any you know aspirations of becoming a, a, a recording artist and going off and doing I just thought you know what I'll go out show people how 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 I sing and the music I do and if it helps me get a different type of gig then then great but it was a, you know it was a side thing from my main, what I want is my main career as a songwriter um, and working with young talent coming through and and uh, and so in that respect it was, uh, it was kind of a funny journey to go on. I mean, journey is a bit of a cliche now. Yeah. You can't say it, but it was. It was, a, it was an experience that I'll, I'll never forget and, uh, and, and it's probably made me a better person. Well, I've got, to, I've got to say, yeah. statistically, uh, from 2004, yeah. you've been the most... Um, the most voted for person on the X Factor, the most successful, 
Uh, yeah. And I, I, of course, I know I know it's difficult mm. now because of the because the path you've gone down since. Uh, but you yeah. can't you cannot eradicate facts. Facts are facts. Facts stay with us for life. They go into history. But facts are facts. Um, I remember watching you. Um, I, I, I don't watch the X Factor. I've got to be totally honest with you. Uh, I watched it maybe the first couple of seasons uh, way back, yeah. uh, but I don't watch it since. Um, when you won the final, you must have thought, yeah. "Well, this is it now. I'm away. Uh, I can now put my music out to people that want to enjoy listening to me." I mean, we've been on a journey with you. Um, yeah. What did you? Think, what did you? Th- what did you initially think when you won the final? And you're standing yeah. there. You got all that, all that lovely glist, glitter coming down all over your face. What did you think at that point? Can I just say, all this is in the book. By the way, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything we're saying is all in the book. And I, I kind of feel as if I'm repeating myself on this story because it's so long ago. And, and as I've written about it, you kind of say, well, you know. And I, I always said to myself, when I do, when I do the book, I'm gonna I hopefully leave it because everyone says, get over the edge. Get over it, get over it. So I kind of yeah. thought, if I do a book, I can lay it down, then people can kind of, if they want to find out what really happened, they can check it out. But no, um, it, it, it was one of those situations where, you know, you, you're standing there, and, and to put things in, because um, you all have listeners who go, yeah. actually, no, Joe, Joe McKeldry had more votes, and, and it's true, Joe McKeldry had over 6 million votes, he had six point, apparently he had 6.1 million votes. Yeah. But it was, it was spread over two nights. That's right. the thing I say. It's like, when I was on X Factor, they didn't have the Sunday show. Well, they only had, had the Saturday show. There was a kind of a break from the main show, wasn't there? And then it came back on later. That's uh, right. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what they do with uh, I'm a Celebrity Now, where they kind of do the, the votes in, in the middle of the show or, you know. Exactly, exactly. And then at the end, you know, they take a, they take a break for the news and then come back later for the results. But now they don't. They... they with it, with obviously, with, like I said with Jeremy Kelly, the, the viewing figures went from. I mean, I think we had about eight million viewers. Yes. They went all the way up. They peaked at. Um, they peaked with uh, Matt Cardell at about seventeen million viewers, yeah. and then they slumped all the way down to. I mean, this year it's under six million viewers. I mean, it's, it's dead, isn't it? I mean, well, we'll, no we'll, way we'll, to... we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute because there's an mm. important question there. Now, Steve has got a book out, Getting Over the X, so we're not going to kind of go delve into this X Factor stuff too much. We all know who Steve Brookstein is and we don't want him to give away. I'd like you to get the book, guys. So get the book because all the juicy gossip around his time mm. on the X Factor what's going, is all in that mm. book and it's, it's fair to Steve, go and get the book. Uh, it's available on yeah. Amazon and all the usual well, outlets. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I, I, there's a bit of me that thinks, you know, the book, I try to do the book in a tasteful way that yeah. it isn't about gossip. Yes, as such, because there's more there's more to it on a social level, on a on a, on a you know a, a morality and a culture that is more important than you know a bit of the you know the sun and they express the titillating gossip. Is Ollie Murray shagging Carolyn Flack? I mean, who gives a monkey? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's more important is when you're someone like Simon Cow, who's your mentor. Yes. He's meant to be looking after you, and he says, "Yeah, I'm, I know this guy. He's my buddy, and I'm going to help him." Yes. And then what he does, he helps you by getting two of his ex-girlfriends to do a little titillating, taking well, one of them. I mean, Samita insists that she didn't do anything. You know, yeah. that's what she says. But yeah. you got um, one of his ex-girlfriends opening her coat, and all she's wearing is a thong. Yeah. Now, whether that's titillating or not, the fact of the matter is. You shouldn't, as a mentor, he should not have been putting one of these artists in a position where, on the night of an X Factor final, you know, when he's got to run the lyrics to Against the Rods, to have one of his ex girlfriends flashing her tits. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, what? So, okay. say, are you, so, are you so, joking? So, so, okay, on the basis of what you've said there, what did that do to, to your mind at that particular time without going into too much detail? What did it do to your mind with what you've just described at that time? Well, well I mean, you know, I mean, people won't, you know, it's, you, won't, you won't believe just how uh, manipulating they, they are, the show, the way something like that can get into your head. So when you do kind of get on stage and you're trying to remember a lyrics to a song that you don't even want to sing you've had afternoon rehearsals where Sharon Osbourne's been a complete yeah. bitch yeah. you know you, you've had you've, you've had that then you get some counties girlfriends doing stuff that you just think is inappropriate and then you get you know um, 
some other stuff that went on that, you know... Okay, it, okay, it, I mean, it's I mean, crazy. I mean it's obviously, crazy. obviously you put stuff in the book there, but yeah. but one, one question I will ask you, and I hope you can answer it, when did you realise in your mind that all this X Factor stuff in your own mind and your mental, what was going on, wasn't yeah. going to work for you? There must have been a trigger point that you thought, do you know what, this is not what I thought it would be. Um, and this yeah. was after you'd won. When, when did it kind of trigger in your mind that, that that's it for me? I'm, I'm kind of, I, I, can't, I can't do this anymore. Well, there's, I mean, there's two, the, the major trigger points. One was obviously in Simon's dressing room. I thought, you know, when you have a, when you have a go at Simon, and you, you tell him what the hell are you doing? And, you, and I'm a 36 year old bloke, and he, at the time he was probably in his late 40s or whatever. And and you're talking to him as a man on man, and he, he's he's quite a control, you know, he's control freak. He's the boss. Yeah. He doesn't have equals. He doesn't, he, you know, it's his way, you know. Yeah. So you know, with that in mind, I kind of knew that I was taking a risk by talking to him like that. But he was, you know, he shouldn't have done what he did. So I, I, that was one example. But the other point was when we came to do the album. I mean, you can check it out. This is not, this is all, it's all documented. You know, he said, he said that I wasn't going to be doing an album of covers. Yeah. Um, and, and the press made a big deal about it saying, you do realise that Simon's going to have you doing an album of covers. And I kind of thought to myself, oh, well, uh, he said he wasn't. And then, when I go and have a meeting with him to discuss the album, it then becomes an album of covers. We should, we should, okay, well, I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be stuck in the Robson and Jerome, but you know, bag and, and yeah. being dumped around that way. And uh, so, so there's a couple, there's a few things. There's another obvious one that I don't want to discuss on radio, yeah, but yeah. there's another thing that um, happened that uh, you know I, I kind of thought, okay, you know, regarding Max Clifford, yes, and yes. you know, and, and I kind of thought. Uh, now this is this is definitely dangerous, and and it, and it made an impact on on my relationship with my wife. So, you know, there's there's more important things in life. But the problem the problem I had was I did not realise just how powerful Simon was within the press. And if I'd known the influence he had, if I if I'd known what he was capable of doing, mm. I probably, in hindsight, I probably wouldn't have done. Um, or, or said the things I'd said. That's, 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 look, that's, I'd, that's, you know, that, I'd, that was actually my next question, Steve. Is that if you look back at that particular period when this album, this second album, maybe this covers album was coming out, would you have treated it differently if you went back there now? Um, the, yeah, I, I mean, to say that, what would I have done differently? I mean, if I, knowing everything I know, I probably would have, in, if I was given a choice of what to have done. Knowing everything, I, I probably would have. When Sharon Osbourne had a go at me on stage, I yes. probably just shook at Simon's hand and said, Thank, "Listen, thanks for the opportunity," and I would have walked off stage. You know, got my girlfriend at the time and uh, and, and my family in the audience, and I said, "Let's go down the pub," <laughs> and so, walked out so, so. and left them with nothing. Left them with no winner, no you know, let the G four win it, let them take that thing, and then just gone away, you know, and I think that would have been the sensible thing to do, but as soon as I'd won it and, you know, you, you get a phone call from Max Clifford saying, talk to the press and we'll bury you, yes. what do you do? What do you do? I mean, I, you know, I always put it to people, what, what would you do? What would, what would I do? do? What would I do if I believed in my convictions, I'd talk to the press? Yeah, but that's the, that's the point, that's the point I'm saying, you talk to the press, what happens? They bury you. Yeah. You can't do, you can't do an interview with News of the World without it getting back to, to Max Clifford and Sun them discussing whether or not they're going to run the story. Well, be a bit... And they, they, you know, what they do, i tell you what they do, they phone up Max Clifford, Max Clifford says, oh, look, i tell you what, don't run that story, I'll give you an exclusive with Simon. So when you see a Dan Wooten yeah. exclusive, yeah. it's because deals are done. Yeah. How, how do you Dan Wooten always gets the, the Simon Cow's house has been burgled, we have all his house been burgled. Yeah. Deals are done. You know, so they stop stories. Half the reason we get certain stories in the papers because other stories are stopped. And people just don't, you know, oh, that's not true. There's conspiracy theories. You know, we know the phone hacking. We know Leveson. We know what people are doing. You know, we know what happened with um, the, the mirror, but they're not even pursuing that because it costs too much money to pursue it. But it's not only that. We know that people like the mirror have got shit on people. They've got stuff. And, and it's a bit dangerous. If you're going to say, look, we're going to investigate you a bit more, well, don't bother because we, we've got this, we've got that. 
You know it. We all know it. So, so, so the, I mean, the, the other question is, uh, can I say hello to uh, Stacey this afternoon? Great question. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, why have you not been invited on any any X Factor uh, series <laughs> since? The, well, well, I know the answer, but I've still got to ask the question. And how hurtful is it when they do these specials where they have uh, X Factor nah, come back and you're not involved? What do you think about that? No, it's not. I don't, I don't have any problems with that, and I don't... Like, People make a thing of it, and I sometimes joke about it. Oh, I can't believe they've not invited me. Yeah. The truth is, I wouldn't want to go on it, and they wouldn't want me. So there's no, there's no losers on that one. I, I, I don't see that. I, I'm just, the only thing, I'm disappointed to decided to, to try and, you know, as soon as you say I want to bury you, and, and they, they a corner. I, I thought it was a shame, because I, I loved my experience on The X Factor. I didn't like Sh- Louis, and I didn't like Sharon. Simon wasn't great, but he didn't bother me. He's, I don't think he's necessarily a bad person. He's done bad things, you know, but I don't think he's a bad person. He's like everyone else just trying to get on in life. But he loves his money. You know, he loves money, he loves power. You well, know, uh, we all love different things. Well, let's talk about that. Obviously, uh, it's not coincidental, and I mean it to all the, the listeners, wherever you tune in this afternoon, it's not coincidental. But obviously, it's the X Factor final tonight. Um, mm. What is your current view on current X Factor. Will it survive? Won't it? What's your point of view on that? Well, we, you know, we all know it's going. We all know it's got they got one more year left on the contract um, for next year, but it's whether or not they they kind of bother with it, because the ratings are low. I mean, this year, for the final, is the lowest ever. It's even lower than the very first year with me, so the money, they're not going to be putting in the money with the advertisers. Yeah. I know that, you know, they're going to say they are, but they're not. Um, and and it's also a perception of the sort of people that you're now, you've got, you've got to look at the sort of adverts that they're going to be uh, bringing in when, you know, the demographic is, is basically kids and couch potatoes, you know, so... Okay, okay, so, so what, do, what do you think then? Uh, th- th- I'm just going to throw this in. I, I haven't got any confirmations on this, uh, but I know ITV have bought The Voice from BBC. I know that. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that Simon will try and get on the judging on The Voice, or is that going to be a deal that's done? You must have thought about this. Um, what do you think about The Voice coming to ITV? Do you think Simon Cowell will end up being a judge on it? No, no he can't be a judge on The Voice. That's, that's 100% no chance. But he's... Um, he. Uh, it's a tricky one because I can't, I can't see Simon Cow coming back for another series of X Factor. He'll make his excuses. He'll go and do Americans Got Talent. He'll go to Australia. He'll go anywhere. But there's no way he's going to want to come and do X Factor again with Oli Murs apparently banging Carolyn <laughs> Flack. I mean, that, you know, he's not going to want to be in that environment. It's 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 low, it's not his level. He's doing it because he had to. I can't see him wanting to come back. I'd be amazed. If he wants to come back, who's going to have? He's going to have, he's not going to have the same lineup because the judges haven't gone down well because the ratings are terrible. So he's going to change it to have Tony Hadley. They're talking about Tony Hadley coming in. Really? They had Craig, I mean, this is the X Factor final. They had Craig David. What's that about? They've actually got Craig David on tonight, have they? It was on last night. Was he? I mean, I, love, I like Craig David. But in terms of them talking about being relevant, they always have the catchphrase in X Factor is someone being relevant. And I like Craig David, trust me, but yeah. he's a great artist. But he, they put him with Bolo and Rojo, <laughs> Reggie and Bully, whatever. You know what I mean? He's crazy. And then they, have, and then they got his. Sorry, I go high pitch when I'm laughing. Then you got. You got. You got Leona Lewis doing a duet with Ben Haymow, which was. Uh, I can't even start on that one. That was ridiculous. I feel sorry for both of them because it because they weren't going to slag off Ben and they slag off Leona, right? Leona sounds, and she'll admit it. I'm telling you, I know people and I know singers. She sounds like she's not singing enough, right? right? Her voice, her strength, her control—it's it's not gone, but it's like when Whitney was on her way down. Whitney stopped singing and she just doing anything but singing. Leona needs to just go and sing again. She needs to get her voice back because her voice isn't what it was. Her voice was amazing. Her voice is still great, but it was amazing. So she needs to get her voice back. Ben, Ben's got a great voice, but he gets, they get her to sing a duet with Leona, a song that he's probably just 
listened to about half a dozen times. He hasn't practiced it enough, and he stunk. He, 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 he was he's was so out of tune, it was ridiculous. But it wasn't his fault. Because I, I'm, the thing is, we know what happens. You get into a situation where you've been told, do this duet with Leona, it'll be great. He's under pressure to do it. And the only reason why Ben Hay now is on, on the X Factor final is because Simon can't have, can't be seen to invite back Fleur East, who is the one, the real winner of X Factor. He yeah. can't be seen to have her back on the show without inviting Ben, because they'll go, where's Ben? Right, so he's yeah. got, yeah, yeah. So he's got, so he's got, he's got Leona Lewis with Ben Hay now, yesterday's people, and then he's got Little Mix with Fleur East. I mean, you know, it's there to be seen. It's a psycho Sony advert for his new Ma product. Uh, Ma it's a joke. Martin in rugby. Steve, great to hear your voice this afternoon. What's your take on the voice? Is it better than the X Factor, or could it be better than the X Factor? I think, I think the X, um, I think, um, thanks, um, um what was his name, sorry? Tony. Tony. Tony, I've got Tony, Sal and Steve all with the same question this afternoon. Oh, okay. Do, 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 okay. You, do, um, you, do you endorse the voice? Do you endorse it? Well, I like the voice. I think the voice is a good show. Um, I hope it, they don't... I think they, I think ITV will actually make it a little bit better, you know? Because it's, it's... There's there's a couple of things that it, it goes wrong on it. I mean, the actual... The chairs and the people turning around, that is a fantastic part of the voice. Yes. And And... And it is a TV show. I mean, it should be about vocals. It shouldn't be about the the pop in the way X Factor is. Because I'll give you an example. On the X Factor, you've got a girl in the final who's got an amazing voice. Her name's yeah. the, the Louisa. Yeah. Louisa's great. Yeah. But then there was a girl that I thought was just as good, if not better, called Jennifer Phillips, yeah. who was um, a soul singer. But and she sang she sang Mary Mary yeah. and um, um, a Mary Mary track and. She, she was fantastic, and I've worked with her, and she could have easily got to the X Factor final. But she had the voice, but she didn't have the look. So that's where the voice is different. It'll, it's more for TV, it's for entertainment. Okay, for okay, older, okay so, you know, why, so why, what, what, where, where are the winners of the voice? Where are they? This, this is the point. Well, that's, 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 exactly, that's the point. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's not about that. It's a, the, X Factor, the voice says it's a TV show. Yeah. You know, we give these people an opportunity. They get a cash prize at the end of it. They can go off and use the voice. It doesn't become part of their legacy. It doesn't become part of their life. Because you've got Ed Sheeran that was on Fame Academy. But no one keeps going on about Ed, Ed Sheeran was on Fame Academy. Yeah. But they go on about... Uh, they go on about that um, Will Young was on Pop Idol. Yeah. They go on about Leona. Leona's been out there for six, nine years. But she's, she's tagged with X Factor. Well, the good thing about something like The Voice is it gives you stage experience, you've done a bit of TV, you're up in your game, but it's not all about the voice. Did you hear of a guy, it, did you hear of a guy on the voice called Jazz Ellington? Do you remember Jazz yes. Ellington? Now, I, now that's somebody yes. who I really yes. like. I really like somebody. He's similar to you, goes out on his own, does his own stuff, not uh, really bothered about the corporate side. Do you like yes. Jazz Ellington? Have you heard his stuff? Oh yeah, he's got an amazing voice. Fantastic singer. You know, he's better than me. It's, and, you know, he's a, he's a, you know, he's a, got a, a superb voice. Um, do, but again, with all of this, it doesn't matter how good your voice is if you haven't got the songs, yeah, or you haven't got the PR, you haven't got the marketing. The voice doesn't really matter. So the voice is nice for a TV show. X Factor is nice for a TV show, but in terms of what they're really about, X Factor's. Ironic. It's ironic because X Factor's only ever produced generic pop schlock. That's all it ever does. But it's called the X Factor. There's nothing wrong with the X Factor that's ever been the X Factor. So if they if they decided if they decided ITV this could happen this could happen for the last for the last ever series on ITV they were to yeah. bring back every single winner that won the X Factor from 2004 um, yeah. to, to battle it out over I don't know over four weeks or something like that. Uh, if you were asked. Be honest. Would you go back and take part in that? No, not in not in a million years. No. So you're sticking to your convictions, then, is what you're saying? Because, yeah, yeah, well, just, yeah. Because I suppose, I suppose, I suppose the hardest part is what I'm trying to say is if you went back there um, with 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 some of the some of the remarks and some quite rightly things that you've said, wouldn't that be thrown in the bin at that stage if you did go back? Yeah, well, they wouldn't they, they wouldn't have me back on the show because when I last time. They asked me back in 2005 when it was a new series with Shane Wars yeah. on it and Andy, Andy Abraham. I was meant to perform 
on two two occasions. One during the live, the first live final, and I was meant to be in the actual grand final. So I was going to do two performances. I was booked in to do. Right. And I and I turned it down. Why? Because I, I, because they we were negotiating my new out my new contract. Yeah. And and it was a case of. And I knew they weren't going to agree to it because I knew they wanted me out out of the situation. They wanted to get rid of me, but they had to. It's a bit like Ben Hay now. Yeah. They, they 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 want they wanted to get rid of me, but they wanted to look as if the X Factor meant something. So they wanted me to go on the show, endorse the product, go, yeah, X Factor's brilliant. I've had such a wonderful time. And then then to turn around and after the X Factor's finished, they got Shane Ward, they got Andy, they got all the other stuff going on. And then they slowly just suddenly go, oh, yes, Steve Brookstein is not selling records, we're going to get rid of him. So I, I wasn't willing to go down that route without any... You know. Well, I noticed I noticed that you publicly endorsed Race Against the Machine when they went up against Carol for uh, the Christmas number one. Um, you, you were actually quite vocal about uh, getting behind that campaign to stop another X Factor... Uh, track going to number one. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not. I had nothing against Joe McKeldry. I think again, Joe McKeldry is a great singer. Yeah. He's a, a and every single winner of X Factor had talent. The only person that I felt that wasn't ready to be an X Factor winner was uh, Leon Jackson, and it oh. wasn't because I didn't like Leon Jackson. Leon Jackson is going to develop into a great artist. He's he's, he's got a fantastic look. He's got a great voice. But what he lacked was um, the confidence, and they didn't help nurture that confidence. So he went on one X Factor on the on the back of being this jittery little kid with a good voice, sounding like Michael Bublé. And a year later, they drag him out, and he's still a jittery little kid who sounds like Michael Bublé. So they didn't really help him over a year. So now he's gone away. He's getting in shape. He looks amazing. He's pumped up, he's singing great, he's doing his own songs, and with a bit of luck, hopefully he'll get a, a, another break and, and record a But, a, but a what, I, what, I, what I'm surprised about is, hasn't somebody approached you or approached uh, other X Factor winners that uh, have been dropped from record labels, or for whatever reason they're not in the, the limelight, to kind of put you lot together and get 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 you guys out on tour? you got to remember, is millions and millions of people voted for you all. Surely yeah. they've got the right still to see you, not be told that they can't see you because you haven't got a record contract or nobody's willing to step in and pay pay the bills to get you on stage. Can't somebody else like yourself get the guys together like Leon Jackson and say, look, let's do something ourselves now. Let's get together. Let's put a show together. Yeah. Come on, let's do it. Oh, it was funny. I was asked by an agent back in, um, uh, I think, going back 2008 or nine, something like that. I can't remember. But um, X Factor put a block on um, a load of acts getting together. Ah. Uh. Um, under the name of X Factor, um, you could. I could. Yeah, in theory, you could get a few of the guys together. Why couldn't you call it? Why couldn't you call it something like the Winners Tour? The Winners Tour. You could, you, you, why does it? Ha- <laughs> why, why does it have to have that brand on there? You're an individual person. Uh, you, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would love to. I mean, do you know what? I, I don't think any of the acts are kind of looking to. I mean, there's at one point I did try and get um, all all the singers from Series One. That I I'd worked with together yeah, yeah. to 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 do a, a song and yeah. and it, it, it nearly came off um, not surprisingly but Rowetta wasn't interested in doing it. yeah but I still <laughs> I, I still of, I still but, think I mean I I've just come back from uh, Southport where I've seen some of the. Uh, S Club Party, of course, they're not all together anymore, but you've got a couple of them on stage there. Uh, you've got E17 yeah. without Brian Harvey, uh, but they're all yeah. out there doing something. I am absolutely convinced with a, with a promo like yeah. that, it would work. Oh, well, listen, I, I'm sure that if if uh, I, we, we did a show, it would be great. Um, but I don't think there's the um, desire from any of the winners to do that and I think that that's a testament of their own belief in them being their own artist as opposed to being an X Factor brand and and, and I, I admire and, I, and I, I do I admire James James Arthur Matt Cardell I've got a lot of time for you know um, even Shane Ward he's doing a bit of TV now you know, he, these people just want to get on and do... They, they take the opportunity and they want to move it forward and do their own thing. There will obviously come a point when one or two of them at the same time will think, what am I doing? I've got to do something. Oh, this is a money earner. 
and they'll, they'll probably look at doing it. But at, at the moment, I don't think you could get four or five people that are on that point. You know, a, a year or two back, I would have probably said, you know, I like, for example, I love um, Andy Abraham as a singer. Yes. And yes. I would have done a show, done a show with him and, um, uh, you know, a couple of others that are, are soul soul singers. You know, I'd be happy to do a soul show. You know, even Jen, as I said, with Jennifer Phillips, who was this year's. You know, but with getting the winners together, it gives that sense of oh, look at these X Factor people getting to. You know, it, it's it's, a, it's something that I don't think there's the desire from the actual artist to to get involved in. So, it. so um, what are you currently doing now? I mean, since leaving the X Factor West, is what what's going on in Steve Brookstein's world now? What's happening? Well, it's. Um, I kind of just, um, I've, I've just put together a soul band, um, we call the Terrells, and it's a, um, it's a, we, we kind of writing some new material, but also, you know, with the corporate world, you, you, you know, people want to hear songs they know, Yeah. And so, you know, we're not, we're not going to be an established band with a load of hits behind us that we can go out on gig, so we, we kind of, um, go, going back to the, Anything from the Northern Soul to the Marvin Gaye and the, you know Al Green and and, and 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 all my a lot of my influences, but also some some other acts like you know like Willie Hutch. I don't know if you know any of these old soul acts, but they, they, it's a, it's a, it's a soul show with a horn section. It sounds great and it's and it's a bit of fun. Um, so but I'm writing again, and I've just funny enough, one of the things that's just come up is I'm I've just spoken to an old friend of mine that had written on uh, a couple of albums of, and I've worked with for, for many years. Yeah. Uh, a guy called Alan Glass, um, he played rhythm guitar on, he's well known for doing rhythm guitar on Shiver. I don't know if you know the song Shiver by George Benson, mm. but it's an old classic, it's a classic for one man, but he's, he's, he's worked with everybody in, in, from Aretha Franklin to Al Green, who a big hero of mine, and you know, and all these sort of boy bands over the years, and uh, we're just going to get together and, and write some new material for a new album for next year so 100 percent i know there's people that bought my i've done three albums now yeah um and and uh i'll I'll be doing an album in 2016 so where would where would you like where where would you like to be in five years time from now where where where's the vision what's the vision um i i don't really i'm you know life is funny you know yeah you, you you try and have plans where you think you're going to be and they don't end up that way so I generally live in the moment I live in the day I've got you know my, my main concern I don't talk about them much but my, my wife and kids yes. are my, my my life so as I said I don't talk too much about the things that I love because um, they're the only being set up for negativity where I can talk about X Factor people oh, he only goes on about X Factor on Twitter I said, That's because it's easy you know I can do that it's, it also kills the show people don't believe it people think if you talk about something it, um, you're giving it fuel but also you're suffocating it at the same time you're suffocating it because it gets to the point of indifference people hate X Factor Oh, to the point in it, oh no, you know. no, here's, no, here's a question for you. Can you say good afternoon to Russell in Tamworth? Russell in Tamworth or Tadworth? Tamworth, T-A-M, Tamworth. Oh, Tamworth. Oh, hi, Russell. Has, Russell. Has he said something nice, has he? Has Simon Cowell ever contacted you since the X Factor to kind of bury the hatchet? That's a good question. I'm going to <laughs> in the back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> You I keep my eye open. I keep my eye open. Uh, you... I never go. I never go to Wembley on my own. <laughs> if you if you were, if you were invited to see uh, Simon on a one to one basis, would you consider that? Um, do you know what? I just know that he'd be well pissed off. He'd be annoyed. Uh, do you know what? I I, I don't. I would. I don't know. You know, it's. I don't really. People think you hold a grudge. It's just that I'm very much aware of, of media manipulation. I know how it works. I've had too many years. It's all right. People look at it from outside perspective because they don't see it every day. But when you've been in in that bubble. 
from 2005 where you've had the, 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 the comments written about you over the years, constantly written about you. And even when, you know, you do a, a coffee, I mean, the big thing is it keeps going on, Steve Brooks, I'm last seen in a coffee shop, and, and, and people don't get the actual story about what that was about. I mean, what annoys me about the coffee shop, the coffee shop story was that I was at a point in my life where I, was, I wasn't really... It wasn't about me, you know, and people think it's always about you, but it wasn't. My, my wife had just done a, a jazz album. It was a beautiful album that we'd spent a lot of time and effort on, and we'd got it signed to Jazz FM. And I'd, I'd built up some relationships with Cafe Nero as a coffee shop. Yeah. And they, they were thinking about going down the, the route of Starbucks, where they, they sell CDs in-house. And it's something that I... I thought, you know what, if I can't use the media in the way I want to, I'm going to just going to bypass the media and do what I want to do. Yeah. So we signed we signed Eileen to Jazz FM, um, and then we did a deal that she was going to be promoting her music in a load of Cafe Nero stores yeah. around the UK, and they would they was they were playing her album in in store. Yeah. You know. And how, so did, and how, did, and how did that turn out? Well, it, it was it was great. Um, we got loads of local radio stations, local press. But then, because of who I am, the national press wanted to pick up on it and poo poo it. And we made headline news. Cafe, it, 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 you know, headline in the Sun or News of the World was Cafe Zero. Um, because I mean, one of the one of the coffees, you know, we did we did a couple of coffee shops. Well, one that we weren't aware that we were going to be, Arlene was going to be there performing, and uh, we got the we got the logistics wrong. You know, it, we weren't meant to be at Ipswich at eight o'clock at night. It shuts at six o'clock. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it was one of these things. It wasn't about promoting. It wasn't. It was never about going there with a ready-made audience knowing you know what we were all about. Yeah. It was all about the fact that. We were going around the UK doing local radio stations, getting on to, you know, speaking to local press and, and building a relationship with the, with the coffee shop, you know, and that's what it was. But we got, I got such bad press for doing it. Yeah. It, it, it kind of, it ruined the relationship with the coffee shop. They, they, was, they, saw, the, they saw their name in the paper for the wrong reasons. Okay. And that's that's the power that's the power of the press, you know. We we, we I, I I didn't go. It's like I'm talking to you now. I've had BBC, the regional radio, BBC Essex, BBC Hertfordshire, all wanting to do interviews this year. I've had loads of people wanting me to do some nonsense on TV and, you know, to to embarrass myself. Mm. It's like you know why do I get arena? And people say, oh, you're, that's why I do things like Twitter. It's, it's just it's my my bollocks. I'm not so, interested. so, so, just, 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 kind of. I mean, definitely a million percent. We're my, my objective running this station is not that in any way, shape, or form to belittle or embarrass you. Uh, but I, I am pleased that you decided to come on here because I know uh, me and Steve have talked a few times off air. Why, why did you decide? I mean, I'm honoured. Why did you decide to come on here more so than the BBC? Well, I mean, BBC have always been good to me. Yeah. Um, but the problem at the moment with the BBC. It's not even a problem with the BBC. The problem is, if it gets picked up by the BBC, the, the propaganda against me yeah. pick, gets picked up. Yeah. So uh, I do I do something with the BBC that be there be someone else countering me by slagging me off in yeah. a in, yeah. in the Sun or in in, a, in another media outlet. And at the moment, you know, I, I've looked at things of if, what I've done in the yeah, past. Yeah. Yeah. You know, promoting the book. And, and I, I just felt that X Factor ratings are such now that it, it, I needed a year off of being so vocal um, in those sort of um, in those areas. Right, right. Um, can you say hello to Abigail? Abigail, hello, Abigail. No, Abigail. How are you? Abigail's in. Glasgow. Merry Christmas, Abigail. There you go. Wow, wow. A Merry Christmas, off Steve Brookstein. Uh, she's in Glasgow. Uh, good, uh-huh. good question. This: Do you consciously use Twitter while yep. X Factor's live on the TV, and why? Yes, yeah, I do it. I do it purely to, um, you know, what? It's, it's about the propaganda. You know, it's a, people are 
people can kind of drift um, in, a, in a mindset of not realising what's going on. And, and that's okay, it's just meant to be like, it's meant to be entertainment. But because I know of the, the propaganda is such positive propaganda for Simon Cowell and his show, I think you need to counterbalance that with somebody who's saying, well, actually, this is what it's all about. So that people are aware of what they're getting into. And if you still enjoy it, great, still enjoy it. But as long as you're aware. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of lying going on. So you're, you're, and, you're, and, you're, 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 you're kind of trying to find the balance. That's what you're doing. You're kind of giving the balance, giving people the choice, but giving them, giving them the other side of the story, but trying yeah. to kind of balance it out. Well, yeah, I mean, for many years, X Factor, and they still do it, they, they would get thousands of people. It's another thing with propaganda is that, that, you know, people don't realise, they, they speak, Simon Cowell will have an artist singing, he'll get 50 people on stage playing violins and singing and, and glitter and flying and, to make it all look better than what it is. You know, and people are, are like, wow, this is amazing, look at all those people on stage, like... You know, a product is as only as good as the amount of people you've got stuck on on stage with the, the performer. So, I, I think that uh, it's important, especially. It's not. I mean, this, you're always going to have your Ollie Murs and and you. That, that was that group, the, the four guys that were big a few years back from X Factor. I can't remember the name. JLS. Yeah. You know, you're going to have these acts coming through. And, and some of them have got great talent, some of them not so talented, but you get these acts that are the reason why you should buy into it. And it's a little bit like capitalism. You're, you're always going to see these shows where people, people, you're going to get seen, you're going to get shown something that make you believe that this is what we should be striving for. Okay, can you say hello to Mark in Ipswich? Um, hi, Mark? In Ipswich. Hi, Mark! Good question. Where were you, mate? We were doing a gig in Ipswich and you weren't there. Where were you? <laughs> Good question from you, Mark. Uh, if you could bring somebody back uh, from death to uh, to do a, 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 a song with, who would it be? Oh, from death? Yeah. For me, for me, for me. You know what? <laughs> God, it, it'd, be, it'd be funny to just bring back Jimmy Savile so we can beat oh, him up. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for this. Oh, Jim, oh, 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 old JSA. Oh, no, no, hey, old no. JSA. Hey, what, what, a, what, a, what a guy, JSA. What a guy. He still gives clues out two weeks before he dies. Uh, even John Lydon back in the day, Sex Pistols, yeah. told them about him and they weren't. In, they just banned him. They just banned John Lydon over his remarks yeah. what he said him. I can't believe it I can't exactly. believe it well there, 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 there you go that's the truth isn't it that's, yeah. and the thing is I know that come time the truth will come out and people go oh yeah look it was right all along yeah. so yeah I mean no good after the event though so I don't want to change, going back to that question because yeah. about sing, if I could bring back one singer to sing with that is no longer with us yeah. oh blimey for me, it'll be Elvis Presley. For me, it'll be Elvis. That, that's me. Yeah. Elvis Presley. Yeah. I, I, mine is a bit of a draw. Mine's a draw at the moment. I'll probably forget somebody, but at the moment, it would either be Lisa Vandals or Marvin Gaye. For me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Both those. So they're both two, uh, you know, they're just, you know, I'd probably, uh, one of those two. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, you know, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, you know, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, uh, if you're just tuning in, it's quarter past one in the afternoon on Second City Radio. I don't know. At lunch, we're talking to Steve Brookstein. Uh, Steve, let's uh, briefly talk about your book. You've got a book out, uh, Getting Over the X. Uh, what could we expect to see in this book if we were to purchase this book? What's in there? Tell us. Well, well it is, you know, it's, I mean. it's kind of. I think it's it's more people to to type of thing. If you actually voted for me, and you you liked what I did, but wondered why where it went wrong, why it went wrong, and why I took the choices I took. It'll give you a good insight as to what, you know, what really happened. Um, if you like the X Factor and you're thinking about going on it, then that's definitely a reason to buy it because, you know, I, I've since met a couple of people that have read the book having been on the X Factor and they, and they have said if I'd read this before, I probably wouldn't have entered. And, and, that's, and that's another thing. I don't want, I don't think um, it's the way forward for, people to go and, and um, take their music forward now having been through the system and seeing how it's manipulated I, I do believe we should have talent shows but not talent shows that are so controlling um, but over the years X Factor what they've done is they've 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 changed the um, they've, they've loosened their grip on the artist so in my in the first couple of years
years, you weren't allowed to have management. Then they allowed management, but the management had to be vetted. So there were managers that, you know, that they knew or people that they invited along. And, and so they've kind of loosened the, the sort of people that can get on the show. But what does remain is that the people that do get through are people that are connected. Um, so, but with, with the book, it's really a case of letting the average Joe who wants to enter this show um, know what they're letting themselves in for. What's going to happen, apparently, they're going to go back to what they used to do with the room auditions, um, which will be interesting because um, I'm not sure it'll work now. No. You know? No. Um, I think it's not the same thing, but I think uh, the same as... Uh Noel's house party that I did enjoy back in the 90s by the way we'll put that out uh, and of course uh, they wanted the show off the air and uh, he tried all sorts of things to change it round but the bottom line is it was tired it was old and it was time yep. to bring something new and uh, new and improved on and I think I think that's the same now with the voice by bringing the voice over to ITV is it even if you manipulate it mess around with it is it going to be the same I'm kind of con- I'm kind of concerned to see what we're going to get next Steve what's going to what's going to be the next big talent find what's going to be the, be the big next singing competition um, the mind boggles on how they move on from the X Factor um yeah I don't really give that too much thought that's for the TV people to worry about I mean they, they always, they will work it out because they, they do, and we, you know we've had TV shows like Gogglebox that I, that I love, and and, and there's, there's always ways of making entertaining TV, and TV's changing now, so uh, it, it doesn't really bother me. So, I, but as far as I'm concerned, for my career and what I want to do going forward, um, I, I, I would just like to see the X Factor go away. You know, it just helps me out um, yeah. because every year, every year it's the same. It's like what are the what are these people doing now? Yes, yes, And it's yes. their chance to yeah. put you in a box, and I don't want to be put in a box. So you basically want them to be writing about something else for a change, sort of the same thing every year. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes without saying that, you know, from July onwards, I mean, this year I was... <laughs> it does make me laugh, to be honest, because this year I was, I was compared to... Uh, Jeremy Corbyn is apparently the Steve Brooks of politics, according to the Daily Mail, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and oh. and, so, and that, that, that does make me laugh. Uh, where can we get a copy of your book? Where can we purchase this from, Steve? Well, at the moment, um, we've only got the the Kindle or iBooks. It's on digital download. So, you know, it's Amazon or, or yeah, uh, iBooks yeah, or something yeah, like yeah. that. Per- perfect for Christmas now. Perfect for Christmas on download, which would be great. Yeah, but we yeah we got the... Um, we did have a, a limited edition. We did a thousand hardback, um, which were they've all gone, but... Uh, we're thinking about doing a paperback next year, depending on what happens with X Factor. I mean, if X Factor goes this year, we may have missed the boat, but if it's going next year, then, yeah, getting over the X would be a, a good way to uh, get rid of it. <laughs> well, listen, it, is a, it, is a, it would be a great Christmas read for you guys out there, so uh, come on, uh, this Christmas, yeah. of course, read the, the real story uh, from Steve Brookstein, Getting Over the X, available on digital download uh, on the yeah. usual outlets. Uh, I've got to say, Steve, that um, it's very, very rare that I am actually engaged, you know, I, I do interviews all the time. I've been totally and completely overwhelmed how that you agreed to come on the show this afternoon. I know that we've got listeners all over the net the, this afternoon. And secondly... Uh, I think people will realise after what you've spoken about in the last 50 minutes, 50, bear in mind, Steve, I'm only going to be here for half an hour, come on, uh, he's been here for 50, bless him, um, that people now uh, will understand that uh, you are a human being, you have got feelings, you have got an opinion, everybody's entitled to that opinion, and I just want to say, uh, as the boss of this station, that I'm overwhelmed and so pleased that you've come on, and I wish you nothing but success, Steve, and, and that's always been the case, you know, I've followed your tweets regularly, uh, he's a great guy, if you want to follow him, do it now, don't mess around, at Steve Brookstein, uh, no doubt he'll be giving his uh, views to the the X Factor final tonight. I won't be listening. I'll be too busy sticking screwdrivers into my eyes. But if you are watching it tonight and you want a different take on it, uh, then of course uh, go and uh, go and watch the timeline. Go and have a look. I, I think it'll, it'll all be positive. It kind of sways things in the both uh, in the in both ways, whether you love or hate, whatever it is. And it's the same with you, Steve. People love you. People hate you. People think you're controversial. But isn't that isn't that what the fun part is? Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's life. You can't. Uh, I don't, it's like this uh, thing with the Tyson Fury thing at the moment yeah. that everyone's been going yeah. on about. It's like yeah. Yeah. I don't ag- I don't agree with these views, but you, you just got to accept that some things you don't you know, just let them say it and let it filter out. It's not not the end of the world. You know, I, 
and what I say, it doesn't really make any difference in the, in the grand scheme of things. You know, as long as uh, most people generally this time of year, we're thinking about getting our Christmas presents, yeah. looking forward to seeing our family, which is the most important thing in life. You know, it always, it always having is. with a, you know what I mean. That's what it's all about, and so I, I don't really believe it or not take it as seriously as, as people think. It's like right now, all I'm thinking about is a cup of tea and a biscuit. Now, I've got, I've, I've got one more question before I let you go this afternoon, and I wanted to leave this till the end. Uh, can I just say many, many thanks to Amy this afternoon. You give Amy a, a, a big hello, will you, Steve? Amy, she's in Bristol. Uh, Amy, why? What's she done? Has she done something good? No, she, this is a good point. Would you ever consider, uh, don't see this as a back, backslide, but would you ever consider doing Panto, or have you been approached to do Panto? Um, blimey, um, I th- I've got a funny feeling I was asked to do Panto many years ago. I just, I don't know, I've, I've turned down a lot of stuff, um, um, just because I, I don't really, mm, yeah, I, I, I just want to make my music, really. There you go. Um, there and, you go. I mean, and, yeah, that, I, I, that, I might, that, I don't see, no, do you know what, I did a musical theatre, I did Our House, the musical, um, and we did the UK tour, and it was absolutely amazing, I loved it. Um, and I did get an agent off the back of that who wanted yeah. to put me forward for more shows. But at the time, I just felt, um, I, I just want to, to just think about what I want to do. I, I, want, I still want to make that killer album. I've done, my first album was okay. My second album was better. Um, a song, an album called 40,000 Things, which is a, it's got some really good things on it. Um, my last album was Forgotten Man, and people think it's a reference to me, but it's a reference to David Ruffin, who is, uh, is, is again, uh, this is another guy that I wouldn't mind singing with if he's still alive today, um, David Ruffin, and, and that album was all a load of old soul classics, which I, you know, there were a couple of originals, but it's, uh, it's basically paying homage to a load of, of my favourites. And so I, my next album is going to be, you know, a, a real strong soul album, but quite original. And uh, once I make that album, that I can kind of go, yeah. There the, you bo- go. the bottom I'll line is, pe- people can be um, um, perceptive of you, they can be negative about you, they can be positive about you. But the bottom line is, and we, it all comes back, we take everything else away. You have got the voice there that cannot be denied. It doesn't matter what else is going on. The voice is there. That's why millions and millions of people voted you the winner. I know it's something you mm. want to get away from, but what I like about it is it's like um, you've got a brother that you never see. You never see this brother because he gets on your nerves, you don't get on, you don't mm. gel. He's always going to be your brother. I think mm. there's quite a few people that love to uh, kind of remove you from any kind of ledger to say that you won the X Factor, but it's never, mm. ever, ever going to happen. And that's that's kind of my mm. little bit of enjoyment or... Je- or um, very enjoying for me to know that people sitting there thinking, how can we eradicate this? How can we remove yeah, yeah. it? It can't be done. And that, to me, yeah. is revenge on its own. It is. Yeah, it oh, is. yeah oh, exactly. Well, that is the funny thing, is yeah. that when X Factor finally goes, I'll still be singing. And, of course you will. And the legacy, will, it, it, it does make me laugh that I'll always be the very but what, but what, what I mean is, what, what, what I mean, guy that nobody likes. I mean, what I mean is, whatever they decide to do, Whatever goes on in the future, whatever, 10 years from now, and uh, somebody mm-hmm. deci- Simon decides to do something else around the winners, you're always going to be, you're always going to be there. It's, it, it can't, yeah. unless, unless we change yeah. our lives, or, or the bloodies, you're there. It doesn't matter. To me, it's like it's like um, E17, Brian Harvey, every year, stay another day, it's there. Frankie goes to Hollywood, power of love, it's there. It, it will yeah. never, ever, ever disappear. And to me, yeah. you must be sitting there sometimes thinking through his mind or people connected to that show, what the yeah. hell have we got to do to distance it? You can't distance yourself. Yeah. It won it. That's it. You can't do nothing. <laughs> Get over it. Move on. Yeah. 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 The, only way, the only thing Simon could actually do is apologise. If, if the only thing he could ever do is, is just put his hands up and say, yeah, this is what I did. Well, wrong. as it happens, that I've got happened. him on the phone now. Just a sec. Here he is. <laughs> I'm joking. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? Simon, if you're listening now, you listen to this little itty bitty stuff. Come on. Phone me now. Let's get it. Let, let's have a loving now. Let's get it sorted. And then you can go ahead and do your final tonight. It'll all be relaxed. Everything will, everything will be the way you want it to be. No. Make the call now. Come on. You've got two minutes. Come on. No, it's all over. Please, <laughs> listen, have a good afternoon. <laughs> 
I'll, um, I better go. I'm, go. I'm going to do a, a gig tonight in Margate, of all places. Okay, I like I've Margate. There, <laughs> I like I've Margate. not been there for years. Okay. It's, um, I'm on the way back, you can see, I'm going from coffee shops to bingo halls. Oh, okay. So I'm on the way back. This is the beginning of the way back from, you know, singing pubs back to the, the, the coffee shops to bingo halls next year in well, can I wish you and your family a very, very Merry Christmas, Steve. And uh, Thanks, I look forward to reading what, uh, what what tweets are out there tonight, all in, all in a passionate way. Uh, Steve, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. He's, he's been with me for an hour. Uh, Steve, thank you so much indeed for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Okay, what an insight. Don't forget-